a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That can be a very difficult passage to hear, because, like me, there have been probably some times in your life when you have prayed that something will happen and it hasn't happened. Perhaps that somebody would be healed of a terrible disease and it didn't work out and they died. Perhaps it might have been something around a job or a fresh start in life. Prayer, it can sometimes feel, can go unfulfilled. And that makes it quite difficult to respond to these words of Jesus that seem to suggest that it's all easy, straightforward, and that we get what we want. And of course, if we have a view of God that really makes God little different from Santa Claus, we are in for some disappointments, just as we were when Santa didn't necessarily bring everything that we put on that list or that letter to the North Pole. I don't think that's what prayer is about, and I don't think that that is what God is about. And I don't think that's what Jesus was talking about. The clue is in what our Heavenly Father really wants to give. And the answer, of course, as I hope you picked up in the closing words, the answer is the Holy Spirit. If we pray for the gifts of the Spirit, we get the ability to discern what our life and the lives of others, the lives of the world, the life of the world really needs to have. If God gives us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is alive in us, directing us, leading us, calling us on, then our priorities change. And it may be that what we ask for, we find new ways of discovering. It may be that our eyes can be opened more clearly to the riches of God's grace. This is a challenging passage to read, not just in terms of our own self-interest. Walking to the cathedral pretty much any day, you will be aware that it is impossible not to see homeless people on the streets, people on low incomes, folk grateful for our feeding ministries, but looking for yet more to sustain them. They have prayers for dignity, they have prayers for sustenance, Watching that can be very frustrating. This isn't just about self-interest. And then we wake up to the fact that we live in the richest nation in the world and we live in a world blessed with natural resources that should allow everyone to be fed. Perhaps the Holy Spirit says to us, wake up, look at what's going on, look at how God has already answered the prayers before you even make them. But now you have to play your spirit-filled part in making God's answer to prayer a reality, because God works best in partnership with God's creation, which means that answering prayer sometimes comes down to our own actions. Amen.